fantastic. I'm assuming that we're the solo warriors, meaning that we do, like, like for example, this whole thing, um, like, the So these Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, well, so I'm, I have an echo, but um, the, the the project that we finished this week that hopefully anybody has noticed is that the wiki is now migrated. Um, we did a lot of updates there. There's a change ticket that outlines all the various changes that took place. Uh, most important thing is it's now encrypted. This is our last site to migrate. 
over the past year of being six sites migrating it's now on one server we have root access we have much more control um and that's all done we can get rid of the old shared hosting server um and i think you mentioned that there's that one megabyte limit there's password increase lengths requirements uh if you have any issues uh please let me know michael at open source ecology.org is there anything else you wanted to talk about the wiki on Yeah, sure. So uh, we have been pretty tied to Google platform for documents as well as Hangouts. Um, we're using Jitsi now, but it isn't really that scalable. So in a long term scheme of moving towards open source alternatives that we can host ourselves. Uh, one thing I have been looking at is a open source video conferencing system. Um, this also solves issues that we run into with Jitsi, uh, which uses uh, WebRTC, which is a relatively new technology that was built for real-time communication such as video and microphone uh, in by Google actually and it's what Hangouts uses um, and it's what also Jitsi uses but you have some scalability issues with a person-to-person -person WebRTC session where you have uh, you know once you reach like seven people you have a connection going from every person's machine to every other person's machine so it doesn't scale very well it's better to have kind of like a centralized server that can take everything and then selectively send out for example, if you can only send out the person who's currently speaking, and then that scales significantly better, and that's called a selective forwarding unit. So Jitsi is actually run by a company called Atlassian that bought an open source project uh, called uh, Jitsi. Um, Jitsi Meet is one of their products. Um, they also have a gateway that backs Jitsi Meet. Atlassian runs Jitsi Meet, which is what we're using right now. Um, but we can run that ourselves. I've looked into it. It's non-trivial. It uses Node, which doesn't play well with our current platform. Uh, another alternative is uh, made by a company, an Italian company called Micho. Uh, looks like Meet Eco. Uh, they have a product called Janus Gateway, which we registered for an AWS account recently, and I've got that uh, running live, actual proof of concept on a free EC2 instance that we have in AWS. Um, I'm still fine tuning it, trying to figure out. The eventual goal is that we would be able to scale to having like 12 people producing content and 100 people consuming content so you have like multiple workshops uh during the extreme ability of multiple people at the same time uh alternating and publishing content and you have a lot of viewers those viewers don't necessarily need to publish the content it all comes from a central server you have that selective forwarding so it scales significantly better Yeah, so Janus, I have like a proof of concept up on a free node right now. Um, I don't, I don't think it'd be great to throw on our server with the issues that that could present for our websites, which are pretty high availability critical. Um, so I'm probably going to get a because WebRTC is built for Snowden and has a a lot of encryption requirements. You have to run on HTTPS. Um, so for proof of concept, I have to mint a new. Uh, private certificate uh, for testing. I didn't do that yet. Put that on the server. And then we can try in a future meeting to use it. Um, it may require some development to get to do exactly what we want it to do uh, for our needs. But I think the next test would be this meeting to try it. Um, but I need to do a little bit of groundwork to make it ready for us to use there. Yeah, I would definitely introduce some security risks. I mean, the software itself wasn't designed uh, to be extremely secure. It's opening another port. If it has some sort of remote, remote execution uh, issue, then it could take, you know, it could affect our server. But also, person-to-person -person communication is pretty complicated. So you have a technology called ICE uh, that sits between, uses stun and turn servers to be able to route traffic. 
And that requires a lot of UDP ports to be open on our server, which um, could present issues. So it's just better if we, and also, of course, you know, if we we're doing a meeting, then it could take down our site because we're sending a ton of bandwidth and uh, some processing usage. Um, so it, it'd be better if it does run on a separate server. So I'm looking at using our EC2 account. Just if, if we can, it, this would be the sort of thing that we don't need to run constantly, but we could automatically have it spin up before a meeting, provision itself, um, and then we'd, we'd only pay per hour. Uh, during workshops and meetings rather than um, having a node constantly run. Yeah, so it's up right now. Um, I just have to get the certificate minted. Um, so maybe a couple of weeks, it depends on the other priorities. I've been mostly focusing with the wiki and um, also one thing I've been doing now that here is working with a 3D printer, um, so it's been kind of shelved. But you know, it, it would probably take uh, a, a couple of days to make it ready. I think for us to use a couple of days of my time. Okay, can you hear me? All right. Um, let's see, I found a few issues in the power cube I'm trying to correct. Um, let's see, I was going back through uh, <clears throat> some of the CAD files because, um, let's see, I was going to, I started to add some, some updates to the engine module. Uh, just simple stuff. I started with the pull cord and I actually uploaded that, but then I realized. Um, from comparing the photos and looking back at, back at logs recently that that engine module is from 1708 and uh, the rough the rough model I think Josh drew it back in August of last year and um, it, it was roughed up before there were photos with measurements of the engine so I, I it was really close on some of those dimensions when I had looked at it before so I think that I thought that it was okay but on further you know looking at more details where I was going to put the oil um, fill points, drains, uh, there's an oil fill and drain on either side, uh, that kind of thing. It needs to be extended. Uh, there's certain, the mount is a little wide and obviously all the bolt holes and everything need to be pretty accurate since we're gonna try to CNC cut all this stuff. So um, I, I think those pretty close. I, th I think the, uh, the measurements and stuff from the photos, I think I can see where I can get all that information off there to, to edit the uh, engine file. I'll just edit the old engine file. I've got it uh, open and it's pretty editable. So that shouldn't take long to correct um, that. Uh, most of it is, is probably fine. But I think that the frame is actually um, gonna, the depth will have to be a few inches longer um, because the, the, the engine, it, it does need to be a bit deeper uh, from front to back. So uh, it may add a few inches to the frame yet, but 
a little more than I thought, but th there's right. some space in there already. Uh, but, and, and then I'm gonna have to start propagating some of these uh, updates to the other frame for the smaller cube, but uh, let's see. Oh, then there was a, there's a cap on top, uh, different, not the cap, fuel cap, but I think it's an air breather cap on top of that engine that's taller too, which I had noted before and that hadn't been updated either. So I'll just make the, the frame notches, top and bottom symmetrical. And that, that should enable the engine to be taken in and out either side. Um, I did get, let's see, some plumbing fittings done, I guess this week too, extra, the SAE. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I had emailed you about the, the change. It sounded like you changed the pump at some point um, on 1710 to the to the 0 0.61 cubic inch model. And I think I think that sounds like it's close enough. Whatever model is on uh, surplus center that site they're being probably ordered from listings there. I think I found one as I said that matches that and. Uh, the, the overall size should be pretty close. So just trying to get the fittings right, and I think it's SE 10 and 12, which 12 on SE dash 12 is is three quarter anyway. So um, <clears throat> it, those should be pretty close, and I've got files that are up for that. Uh, I also did some work looking more at FreeCAD and uh, the OSE pipe workbench and. Uh, I didn't get too much flamingo, but I looked at some of that. Uh, I know you were talking about FreeCAD earlier in general on point sixteen, the legacy uh, version, which I'm, I'm still using just to edit stuff. But um, the OC pipe workbench is some of the issues there that would see glitches sometimes with some of the parts. I think are related to the new part workbench. It's more compatible with uh, for point one seven. Which for some software issues and stuff that that kind of makes more sense. Uh, maybe Musan might have to technically tell more about that. Maybe I'm wrong about certain compatibility issues there, but that seemed to be what the part system is. Because my understanding is, even though we're we've got a lot of kind of legacy stuff with the the Colin Point One Six, the legacy version of FreeCAD now, um, that that part workbench should be better overall for 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 parts design in the future because they're they're kind of it, it lets you do different things it, it's just an improvement and there's going to be more improvements we might be a year behind and and the assembly to work which we said is is kind of buggy in a lot of ways too you have to kind of minimize your use of that and keep the files small um so you said one megabyte. I'm trying to think how many files free CAD files that are on the wiki like the master CAD files that are over a megabyte um I guess I need to look at that because that they'll just have to be put on, um, I guess, uh, GitHub or whatever, which uh, Josh, I think, started with. Um, um, latest power cube. Uh, I haven't adjusted the power cube. Let's see. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't add the. Uh, the fittings that I made it to the, the new power cube. I'm going back and I'm working on the engine uh, still. So I haven't actually updated too recently. I didn't notice that it wouldn't let me upload, I don't think.
Hey, um, I guess is the reason for the wiki file size limit, is that related to uh, just space issues eventually because the files are getting bigger, or is it more because the wiki doesn't handle larger files better somehow? Is that? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Uh, well. Hmm. Yeah, I guess maybe that's more of an issue with the way the wiki database. I don't know how it versions files because most modern file systems, my understanding ZFS, they do do a lot of deduplication, but the wiki. Uh, I don't know how it stores that. I know it's databases. Uh, I'm sure Michael probably knows about that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. So you maybe the file that, right? storage is not efficient. Um, so actually it's not stored in the database. It's, it is stored in the file system and the file system is not ZFS, but I don't think ZFS would, would deduplicate at the, at, I mean, it would duplicate at the file level. I don't know about the block level. If you had it very slightly changed. Uh, power cube if it would if it actually do duplicate that but we have the wiki is I think almost 20 gigs most of its images that are uploaded and it's really just a future deal with it you know if we had multiple servers that we had our own like a physical server and a physical data center then we could s segregate it much easier but we only have one server so just going forward it's much better to put that cap at one meg um, which I think is fairly reasonable uh, and then the rest can just go to internet archive and then we just link to that from our wiki, which is a pretty durable long-term solution for large files. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm surprised. Well, I, mean, I guess the, the space issue is more because we've moved to a different cloud solution too, probably. So, I mean, space overall over time has gotten much, much cheaper, obviously, uh, you know, gigabytes to yeah, terabytes. If, if we could have a physical machine and just throw our drives in and buy them, it'd be cheaper. But you know, regardless, if we're going to be buying from somebody else, if we don't have our own data center, if we're going to be buying from somebody else, that cost uh, grows significantly. And then you talk about backups and having to store the backups, um, you know, that you know, over time and, and many, many copies, multiple days, multiple months, multiple years, that really explodes a lot if we don't have our own hardware. Yeah. Okay. And I guess the cloud solution is probably faster. I did notice a speed up that a little bit, so that's nice. And there's probably better software solutions in the future for mm, the file management, GitHub, whatever uh, works best anyway. So uh, I, I did look at, again, at Josh's uh, use of, of GitHub for, uh, let's see, the micro track. I was looking at that because I was trying to see if he, how he had the, uh, if he had the power cube engine and any of that. There. that those aren't, I guess, subparts listed in his uh, GitHub repo for the micro track. But, um, we'll just have to migrate that over. Okay, I think, um, let's see, did I cover? I've gone long, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep it short. I think, um, I don't think I have any questions, let's see, about, I think I know what I need to know to, to fix the, the, the engine module and everything. Um, let's be updating that in the cube a little bit more. And I think I've got most of the plumbing parts. I may have to draw some more quick adapters. We have some drone in the some drawn in the uh, uh, fittings library, but uh, gotta draw a few more sizes of plumbing parts, and, and that's probably it. I I was noticing how uh, I was trying to see how the piping workbench could be used to to try to adapt more of these fittings, but the slight differences and um, I have to do. Eventually, that that could be feasible to uh, if redraw the right uh, DXFs and get the dimensions right. Some of these fittings can be just be drawn in real time, probably in the workbench. But that that's going to require a bunch of. Uh, I don't know that there's a lot of code rework on some of it. It's probably partly just figuring out how to line things up and draw the uh, 2D and all that. So I think we've covered that before. So uh, eventually, hopefully, we we'll have time. Uh, to do that, but I'm going to keep uh, just using FreeCAD Legacy 0.16 and uh, 
drawn up all the rest of the parts on the on the cube. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with the 0.17 part work part workbench yet. Um, I think there's improvements there, but um, and I haven't tried uh, Assembly Workbench 3. I'm sure that's great too. I think you have to install a, a separate version of FreeCAD. I've already got three different versions of FreeCAD, but I'll have to try that eventually too. Because um, Assembly 2 with lots of parts, as I've said before, it, or lots of constraints, it, it tends to get buggy and, and things get lost in there. Oh, yes. Um, last week I met with uh, some uh, people from OSE uh, Germany. Um, they um, uh, they have um, or they are building a more official organization, uh, non-profit organization, um, and uh, there is uh, some. Um, some project which um, uh, cooperate with open source uh, ecology Germany. For example, I put um, I put. Oh, uh, I, I will explain to you later. They are not. Um, you know, th uh, there are still things which are not finished, and you know, I, I spoke with people from OSA. Germany is it's better to wait until everything is done, and then um, then I will um, publish them. Now that uh, yes, and I, I wanted to discuss with you something uh, of the record uh, when we finish um, the talk, if it's possible. Now I will tell you of the record. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Last week I met with uh, people from uh, Libre Solar Project, Solar Box. They uh, they create a, a device which um, uh, get energy from solar pa panels and then. Uh, um, converted in in, uh, in uh, some particular way, um, they try to optimize the current and the um, what is the other current? Uh, I forgot the name. The voltage, the voltage, um, and then uh, they store um, the energy in batteries. And they also do. Excuse me. No, I I don't know it. Should I find out? Probably yes. Yes, open hardware. Uh, everything there, even the case. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, now they they do some experiments. They cooperate with uh, some um, 
something like university in Hamburg and they have access to laboratories. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think uh, that they uh, perform some tests to, to find out. Um, not, uh, not now, but, but you have uh, a page uh, in front of you. You can see. <laughs> yes, I also <laughs> notice it. Um, yes. Uh, but uh, also the case is made by Oliver. And uh, Oliver built also one of the first prototypes. In general, uh, the uh, they develop the OSA people from Germany. They, they seem, uh, it, it seems like they have a pretty uh, large focus on energy. So we possible, uh, possibly, or we should share uh, their knowledge. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Um, in the, uh, the meeting with Martin Jäger, it was, uh, yes, it was a working meeting. We, we discussed some, uh, some tests that they performed in the laboratory and, uh, what went wrong or how we can improve it. Uh, I even, uh, tried to remember the error analysis I done in university and tried to, uh, to estimate uh, errors and how they think is working. Um, and uh, they, they talk also in the day about the possible re uh, operation system for uh, uh, for this device. Uh, there should be a possibility to uh, to get information about uh, um, state of, of this uh, of this device uh, of a CRN bus or VLAN. And they want to use uh, an open source uh, real-time operation system, Riot, which also is developed in uh, this uh, university. Uh, yes, they, they are really focused on the uh, didactical parts and they, as far as I understood, they also teach people how to uh, solder these, uh, these things. It's very didactically oriented. Uh, I, I saw many prototypes. Hey. They even uh, have a nice housing. Uh, I, I watch how they uh, mute with CNC machine in a fab lab. Uh, it's a plastic case, uh, which is uh, treated by CNC machine that uh, it has a proper ventilation and I 
I don't know. Um, but uh, possibly, um, uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, use um, 3D printing parts for electronic components. Maybe the thing, uh, the uh, the device uh, get warm, and you need to, to have a particular housing that it will not melt. But I don't know. And they also they also have uh, uh, or had uh, some uh, um, development on uh, wind energy. Um, turbine oh. uh, vertical axis excuse me I can I'm not sure uh, what, what is what was the last state by, but I spoke with a guy who um development it and uh, he, this is his uh, specialization mm. the name is ahmed i have uh, i i think the uh, the open source ecology germany server is now down unfortunately with C. I think you, you spell it uh, wrongly. Wait. Um, I, 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 I correct you. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's uh, going all right. Um, so uh, I was able to uh, do some cuts from the uh, PVC pipe, which uh, you'll fit exactly with the lengths of the uh, steel rods I cut for the axes. So that's the uh, awesomeness of CAD. That was pretty cool. See that come together. Um, so yeah, um, I have uh, routed my um, the belt tensioners and uh, getting electronics set up and uh, you know just kind of wrapping up the design had a whole bunch of delays there with um, McMaster getting me longer rods uh, it's one thing I noted that I need a bit more um, <laughs> uh, rods to cross for the uh, Z axis so um, have those coming in but uh, so it's looking good I mean so the one thing you know uh, Marcus and I discussed was uh, with the extruder I currently have purchased a Mark 8 extruder, but um, we want to try the um, Presta i3 uh, Mark II extruder uh, for the printer. So, um, right, um, I, was, I didn't get those parts from uh, Steven originally. Um, I know we have a new model out there, so intention was to print it. We tried recently on the market, got it jammed up, soaked it in acetone, hoping to print it. If I can't, uh, I'll either have a you know, online company printed or uh, see if someone in the uh, team can help me uh, with a print, get that extruder out, um, right, and just get E-steps and all the rest of that kind of stuff. I know I you know, did the calculations and the basic math for the E-steps, but that Mark 8 had nothing but troubles <laughs> from the beginning on it, uh, under under extruding or uh, chipping away at the uh, you know, filament and not extruding or um, just that, that I've had just not, nothing but issues. It's a GE Tech, a G Tech, and a couple other uh, Chinese manufacturers. I had nothing but issues with that uh, extruder, really, for keeping temperature. Um, I haven't had time to really do a, a detailed analysis of it uh, quite yet, see what's failing. But uh, 
yeah, so I'm hoping um, you know, get things up and running at least initially uh, this week that uh, I get some basic prints done this week or next week. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Be awesome. That, yeah. And I, you know, if, uh, you want to invoice me or whatever for those or, uh, donate, be appreciated. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's really, that's really blocked there. The rest of the stuff's up and taken care of and, you know, it's, uh, doing lots of stuff. I'm over here in a, uh, you know, verification lab. I got PLC fives and all the rest of that kind of stuff around me getting, uh, lift stations commissioned. So I had a lot of recent stuff over here as an engineer um, doing the sump the sump pumps for a city. It's pretty cool stuff. But uh you know sometimes uh a systems engineer, I know I'm a bit off of meetings, but you know we get pulled into you know six sixteen hour days every day keeping uh, things running sometimes. Happens. Right. It's all DIY and it's not machined. No machine parts yeah. there. So that's, that's huge. Right. So sure. Right. Well, yeah. Good. So yeah, we, we want to get the 3D printed parts and we want to get the hobbed bolts again uh, versus uh, gear. So that I had never had anything wrong with a hobbed bolt. That's been reliable for me always uh, with the, the big extruder that broke after uh, working for like five years on the uh, Airwolf was just a hobbed bolt, so. Um, yeah, definitely makes sense. Yes, it is. Yep. Yeah. That's what that looks like. It's, oh man, it's gigantic. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. So see, see that right be tool chest right back there. Um, so yeah, it's a 12 inch bed and I was able to, I have to update my sourcing, uh, document and keeping those up to date in my uh, log page for this. Um, but, uh, you know, I have that big old rubber heat bed that goes in the back. I found a $30 source for those beds. Um, it's been that, you know, it seems to be working pretty well for me. So, I mean, and that's, I had just a couple questions uh, real quick here. Uh, so first one, number one is uh, for the bed. Are, are we just attaching the uh, silicon heater to the back of the metal plate and then putting the uh, PVA sheet on top on the metal sheet? Oh, it does come with one, with one, which was nice. Yeah, right. Yeah, PEI. Oh. <laughs> 3M tape, yeah. So. That was one of the things in the bill of materials. I did buy that. So cool. That's what I'll use that for. Okay.
Now, is that to attach the PEI sheet to the bed? Okay. Right. Right. Cool. So I have that. Um, so it looks like I have all the materials for that. And um, the one thing I also was missing as far as parts is I, I realized that I only have, um, you know, for the actual heated bed suspending it across, I guess I have two Z-axis units. You don't see the other one in that image, but there are two Zs in this build. Um, I only have one of the uh, short idlers left uh, with what Steven printed me. So if I could have uh, one more short idler, I, I figured that's what you guys use. That's what it appeared to be. So I, I, I need one uh, short idler as well for my shopping list. Cool. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm set on everything else and uh, get this mainframe built and uh, I'd appreciate the help on the Mark uh, too. Thanks, guys. Right. Yeah, I'd love to do those and then try out the, uh, I'm really interested in that volcano extruder, of course. I mean, if we can get these build times short, have really good, efficient, uh, you know, build clusters, it's going to be awesome. I do. I have one in, in my possession. I have like uh, four or five of them. They came in. They seem to be functioning correctly under test. Sensing and, and the in the, uh, the actual uh, diameter of the device is significantly larger. And so our model has been updated. So, yes, it is. It is the larger one. Yep. Yeah, so uh, tonight I'll have a little bit better. Tonight's going to be kind of a documentation day, so go ahead and check my log uh, tomorrow morning. There should be some interesting stuff with uh, what, what's going on in the build. All right, guys. Got to get back.